the Deckles present Winter Break December 2017. We open the new year with 7 states in 8 days, 27 hours driving, jazz music and the history of civil rights. First station, Dixon State Park in Southern Illinois. The park is on a giant block of rock which was dropped 200 feet. Dixon Springs takes its name from William Dixon, one of the first white settlers to build a home in this section. Dixon Springs becomes a 19th century health spa which attracted hundreds to the seven springs of mineral enriched water. It was great to eat there our traditional Friday lunch and to enjoy the natural environment. Memphis, home of the blues and birthplace of rock and roll. Memphis is situated on the Mississippi River in the southern corner of Tennessee. Andrew Jackson named Memphis after the ancient capital of Egypt. Memphis developed as a trade and transportation center because of its flood-free location high above the Mississippi River. Gibson Brands is an American manufacturer of guitars and other musical instruments. The king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley, relocated to Memphis with his family when he was 13 years old. His music career began there in 1954, recording at Sun Records Studio. Martin Luther King Jr. was an important leader and activist in the civil rights movement. Martin Luther King Jr. led many nonviolent protests for civil rights around the country. He was inspired by Mahatma Gandhi's principles of nonviolence. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated on April 4, 1968, while standing on the balcony of his hotel. He was shot by James Earl Ray. In the evening, we went to see an NBA game. It was Memphis Grizzlers versus the Los Angeles Clippers. It was much more than a basketball game. We really had fun. The Memphis Pyramid structure plays on the city namesake in Egypt, known for its ancient pyramid. Today, inside the pyramid, there is a Bass Pro Shop Megastore, which includes shopping and outdoor observation deck. Over there, we tried our first moon pie, which is two round cookies with marshmallow filling in the center. The most ridiculous and funniest thing in Memphis is the duck parade. It's happening every day at the Peabody Memphis, a luxury hotel. In the 1930s, the general manager returned from a weekend hunting. He and his friends found it amusing to leave three of their ducks in the hotel fountain. And since then, the ducks have played in the fountain every day. The Laufer Bluff State Park area located on the banks of the Pearl River in Jackson, Mississippi. The park manager told us that there is alligators in the water, but he also said that it is too cold for them to go out of the water. It was very fun to stop there for shokshuka.
Drop me off in New Orleans, babe. New Orleans is a city in the state of Louisiana. It was named in honor of the French Duke of Orleans. The city was first built by the French at the mouth of the Mississippi River. It became a territory of the United States when President Thomas Jefferson bought the Louisiana Purchase in 1803. We walked a lot in the city and immediately we felt the special atmosphere. The St. Louis Cathedral is beautiful. In the middle of the park, there is Andrew Jackson's statue, the seventh U.S. president. New Orleans is the birthplace of jazz. From every corner, we heard music. Jazz was invented by African-American musicians in New Orleans in the late 1800s. Most of the city of New Orleans lays six feet below sea level, and it's surrounded by water, a fact that didn't help when Hurricane Katrina slammed into the city in 2005. It caused lots of damage that still today the city didn't recover completely from that disaster. The New Orleans Jazz Museum is a music museum dedicated to preserving and celebrating the history of jazz music. We got the chance to learn about the jazz history, to learn about famous musicians and singers including Billie Holiday and Louis Armstrong. Another colorful part of the city is the food. In many of the restaurants, either there is a band or people that's singing. One of the iconic places is Café du Monde. Their famous dish is puffy square French donuts covered in powdered tons of sugar. Another dish we couldn't miss is the gumbo soup, a traditional dish for Louisiana Corral people. One of the most remarkable spots in our trip is Louisiana Plantations Tour. A plantation referred to a large-scale agriculture operation on which slaves are put to work. We saw the plantation master's family houses, and next to them the slave housing, a wooden building with two or three separate rooms. We could touch the history, we could explore places where the time stands still, we could imagine the life during that days, understand slavery and civil rights. The next stop was Birmingham, Alabama. In the 1950s and the 1960s, Birmingham gained national and international attention as the center of activity during the Civil Rights Movement. Their goal was to gain equal rights for African American people. Before the American Civil War, there were almost 4 million black slaves in the United States. Only white men with property could vote and only white people could be United States citizens. The segregation in Alabama was so extreme, it all started in Montgomery, Alabama. Local black leader Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on a public bus to make room for a white passenger. She was arrested. After visiting the Civil Rights District, we went to the Science Museum that was great relief from the long drive. Finally, Nashville, Tennessee. The more we went up north, the colder it was. Nashville is a great city, home for country music, but it was way too cold. So we changed our plan and we had fun in the local science museum. 